Hello everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. What we have to take a look at today is something that is new to me, something that is new to the show, but not something that is new. And what we have is the Loyal Subjects Best Action TMNT Raphael. Now, longtime viewers of the channel may remember that I've dabbled in turtles here and there. A year or two ago, I forget how long ago it was, I picked up a two-pack that was the Playmates TMNT Stranger Things mashup two-pack. And I wasn't real happy with Leonardo in that one, so that never really went past that two-pack. I didn't get any of the other turtles. This, however, despite my less than enthusiastic reception to the Loyal Subjects incarnation of Cowboy Bebop, this has piqued my curiosity because this is the IDW version of the turtles. And to date, the IDW version of the turtles is my number one favorite incarnation of the Turtles. I love what they're doing with the line, with the lore. I love what they're doing now that that 50 issue, that 50 plus issue run of Sophie Campbell's came to an end. They ended the TMNT main title. They've picked it back up since then, but now they've also done all of these offshoot titles, what they did with The Last Ronin. And I'm I think I like the IDW version better than even the Mirage version. And remember, you're talking to a guy that first started reading TMNT during the Mirage comics era. But I wanted to get these because this was the only company that, as of the time of this recording, that's doing an IDW version of the Turtles. Also, with Loyal Subjects, you're not really paying that premium price that you would for something like uh, NECA or Super 7, and to date, I don't think Playmates is doing an IDW version. Right now, I think they're just doing reissues of a lot of their old molds. So I wanted to check this out, and of course, I start with my favorite turtle, Raphael. Now, this version of them, I believe, is about a year old. I think they were first unveiled at Comic-Con last year. I think that's when they came out, and I've just sort of been sitting on it, debating whether or not I was gonna try it. Finally decided to pick up Raphael, We'll see how things go with this. Now, what I like about the packaging is you can see everything in here. So like if this was on the shelf, this would be a huge selling point because you have different head sculpts, different hands, different weapons, all kinds of accessories. Kind of reminds me of like a Loyal Subjects version of those old Playmates toys where you would get a bunch of different weapons. You would have that sprue with the weapons on it. You have the Ninja Stars with the Shuriken right here. The only thing this has that that wouldn't have is additional hands and additional head sculpt. And right down here, you can see we have this little sticker, limited edition collector's card inside. So we'll see what kind of cards they're dealing out. We have some nice artwork from the IDW era of the turtles uh, sort of circling the edges of the box. Over here, real nice graphic of Raphael in sort of like his meditative, as meditative as it gets for Raphael right here. On this side, we have a nice shot of Raph in action. On the back, we have, I think this is basically a digital render of the figure that's inside. And up here, we have straight from the pages of the TMNT IDW comics with custom artwork from Mateus Santaluco. Whatever that name is, if I mispronounced it, I apologize. With Mateus Santaluco, TLS proudly presents Raphael, best action, or best features, best articulation, best assortment. Include sculpt details, incredible sculpt details with tons of accessories, 31 points of articulation, and the best character selection. So we will see how true that is. I do know that for their IDW run, one reason I waited on it was because they came out with the IDW Turtles, but I wanted to see if they came out with any more. And over the past year, they've really been building on that. That we have the four turtles, we have Roth on a motorcycle, we have Janinka that just came out, we have some foot troopers. Um, I'm just waiting on Karai, Splinter, Casey, you know, the supporting cast for them. And I think if they, I think they could take this IDW line really far. So I'm really excited to open this up and take a look at it. So, without further ado, let's open this up and let's take a look at the Loyal Subjects Best Action TMNT Raphael.
And remember, if you want to add Raphael to your collection, you can get him at... Entertainment Earth. Entertainment Earth is your one-stop shop for all toys, clothing, collectibles, and more. Get the newest from Hasbro, Mattel, Bandai, and Super 7, as well as exclusives that can't be found anywhere else. With over 25 years in the business, Entertainment Earth has what you want. Click the link in the description below. Okay, here he is, Raphael, out of the box, and putting the tape measure to him, we can see that he is roughly five and a half inches to the top of his dome. When I was taking a look at the Loyal Subjects Cowboy Bebop figures, Spike and Vicious, one of the critiques I had of them, one of the criticisms I had of them, was that they were very fragile, they were very frail, they felt like they were going to break in my hand. As a matter of fact, I think I did end up breaking Vicious on camera, um, when I was recording the review. But Raphael here, he has some weight to him. He has some heft to him. He's a big, chonky boy. He's short and, like, stout, very squat, and I like that because that's how the turtles are supposed to be. And with this thick torso right here, he's very well balanced whenever you stand him up. Could also have something to do with these big horking feet of his. Also, I really dig the sculpt on these. I don't know how well it's showing on camera, but there's some scarring here on the front of his shell, which I wish they would have given the front of his shell a little bit of a black wash just to make those features stand out. Because there are other ones down here, like towards his, the, the lower part. He has some more tucked underneath here. There's like that cross thatching right there that I really feel like if they would have gone over this with a black wash or something, it would have made those pop out. We don't have anything really on the shell. We have this one right here. And it looks like we have some light battle damage on the back of the shell right here that once again, a wash or something would have really made all of that stand out. I appreciate that the sculpt is there. I just wish it would pop and stand out a little bit more. His arms and his legs, you can see like the veiny muscles that he has going on, especially right here around the neck, just perfect for this snarling battle face that he has going on. So that is very cool. I like the sculpt. I like the size. I like the weight of him. I really like the balance. Paint app wise, the mask is done superbly, except for right here. You can see there's some, there's a little bit of a soft application right here that I can't tell if it's just soft application or if there is some paint smudge that they went a little too far with it right there. This side doesn't look bad. This side though, it looks like they may have missed the mark. Um, I did have this spot right here as well that has some paint chipping on it, but I think that's really all I have as far as paint flaws on it. The eyes are whited out because Whenever they, went into, whenever they go into battle in the IDW comics, they do have sort of like that anime whited out look. When we look at his other head sculpt, you can see his eyes more clearly there. The teeth is a little bit of a soft and maybe a little messy paint app. You can see some paint thinning right there. You can see a little bit of slop along the, the gum line here. Once again, I wish they had done something to just make them stand out a little bit more. Or that might have been actually a little bit of a, like a too big tooth thing where like all of these teeth standing out would just look creepy. I don't know. What do you think? I The more I look at it, the more I think maybe this is the best option. But they still missed some spots. Like it looks like he even has a gap right there. And you can see they missed some paint right there as well. So as much as I like the sculpt and I really like the coloring of it, they did... They did some misses with the paint apps, but his skin coloring, his skin tone, I really like as well. There was a uh, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive four pack of the Turtles, which I think was the first IDW Turtles that Loyal Subjects came out with. And the skin tone was very different from these. It was a little too bright, a little too garish, didn't quite look like the comic Turtles. To my, in my opinion anyway, they were a little off color, a little too bright. So I didn't pick those up. Also, like I said, I wasn't really sure how far this line was going to go. But when they came out with the four individual turtles and it has this like more real skin tone to them because all four of the turtles, I think, look better in their individual incarnations rather than the San Diego exclusive four pack. This was one of the things 
that made me start to lean into maybe I'll try this line out because I do think the coloring looks better on these. Also, the belting that he has right here, his belt and his sash are a fairly soft plastic, so they're a little malleable. You can move them around a little bit, but they're also pre-molded, so they do hold position and hold their shape very well. The back of the belt sort of slips down every once in a while, but other than that, they hold position on RAF very well. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the articulation that he will do a full 360 with his head. Now his head is a very tight fit. There's not much going on here. Let's pop this off. Just a big ball, just a big socket. No hinge, no dumbbell joint, nothing right there. But the head does fit on very tight. A little bit of tilt side to side. You saw the 360. He can look up okay. Whoop, the back of his bandana fell off. He can look up okay. He can look down okay. Not a whole lot of dynamic movement with the head right there. Let's pop that back in. Arms. We'll do a full 360 spin. We have a really good butterfly joint going on here. The arms, whoops, that was me. That wasn't the figure. I got a little too rambunctious with it. The arms will come up just to 90. I wish they would go up a little bit higher. He has a bicep swivel and he has double jointed elbows that for as thick and chonky as his arms are, has some really good travel, but you have to admit this is a bit of an ugly joint right there. Also with the bicep swivel, it is just a straight line, although they did a pretty good job of hiding it with the curvature of the bicep, but you can see it really is just a straight line right there. It gives a nice illusion though, that it's like curved in there like a, like a Marvel legend or a Joe figure does. Wrists swivel, wrists pivot, whoops. Wrists pivot in and out. One thing you have to be careful of is that the wrist peg isn't very deep on these. And you saw that it keeps popping out. And it's not that they're loose, it's just that I'm being a little too rambunctious with them, but it is a very short peg. It stays in fine, unless you get a little too enthusiastic with it. Now, right here, let's get your arms up, Raf. Right here, under the shell, you can see there is an articulation point right there that helps with some side to side, not really with any back and forth, and definitely not with a turn. So there is some articulation in there that lets him get moving side to side just barely. Right there, but that's really about it. There's no turn at the waist. And there's really no forward or back. That's more or less just moving on the hip joints. So this is, I feel, a common occurrence with a lot of Turtles figures that the torso is pretty much, it is what it is. Hips do not drop down, but they do come forward fairly well. Now this right here is a soft piece of rubber, so it does help to move a little bit whenever you bring the legs up. Legs will go back, okay. Legs will come out to the side very well for a chonky figure like this boy. He has thigh cut, double jointed knees with some decent travel to them. Once again, though, that is a kind of an ugly joint going on right there. No boot cut, no ankle swivel, but the ankles rock back just a little bit. The ankles rock forward, almost non-existent, and there is a forward-facing pin for some rocker. So as much as I would love to have, like, such dynamic movement from a ninja. We have to accept that he is a big chonky turtle. Now, I think there are options that you could get some really good posing, some really good articulation out of figures for the turtles. And I think maybe like Super 7's 2002 turtles that are coming out with the double jointed knees and elbows would be like that. NECA turtles, I don't have enough knowledge on to comment on. But I'm I'm fairly happy with this articulation. We'll see how well it works when I start taking pictures for the end of the video. But so far, I do like the look and the function of this guy. I really like this angry battle face that they have in the stressed neck right there. I think that all looks fantastic. I'm This is this, this looks good to me. This really does. So coming out of the box, Raphael has a pair of weapon holding hands. 
He also comes with this set of hands that this is pretty much just an open hand right here, but this hand serves a purpose. This is for holding his shuriken, which you'll see once we take a look at his accessories. And then finally, he has this set of hands, which if these look familiar, they should. These are for holding his sai in that tong first, sort of like punch dagger pose, which truthfully, I'm not entirely sure that's actually a proper way of holding sai, but who cares? It's awesome, and it's going to look good once we take a look at his sai. Now, Raphael has additional hands, but he also has more than one head option, which he has this snarling combat ready head right here that we've been taking a look at and as you saw you can just pop the head off we have that big ball joint right there and then we can pop this other head on oh that is a tight tight fit there we go oh that is tight <laughs> <laughs> we can pop that other head on, and this is more of a relaxed neutral face, or at least as relaxed as Raphael gets. And you can see that he has, you know, eyes in this one, and I think those look really good. I do like the look of this. This one looks like it's going off to the side a little bit more than that one right there. What do you think of that? I also wish they would have done something, maybe even just a black line between his lips, to bring that expression out a little bit. And once again, I feel like we got a little bit of overspray, a little bit of slop with this side of the mask. Not so much this one. Now, both heads do have this peg hole on back that we have multiple bandana options that we have this one. It's kind of blowing in the breeze, and you can reposition it for different, you know, different looks, different positions, different styles. And then there's the one that he had in the first part of the video, where it's basically just, neither of them are really relaxed, but this one will sort of like hang down. All of them have a little bit of motion to them, and I don't mind that. It adds a little bit of motion to the figure, to the character, makes it a little bit more dynamic. What do you think? Which one do you like better? Um, I do like the combat face, but I think I'm probably going to be using this one more for just displaying purposes. Now, the first thing we're going to take a look at is Raphael's shuriken, and these are pretty decent for what they are. They're not molded in this silver plastic. I don't know what color the plastic is that they're molded in, but they do have a silver paint scheme to them, giving them a very metallic look to them and my camera doesn't want to focus on it. Um, but they look good. They're a little oversized. All of his weapons are a little oversized, and I don't think I mind that, just because it makes it easier for us as people to hold them, but it also makes it easier to keep track of them, to fit them on the figure, to fit them in the sheaths, and to fit them in his hands. Now, if we take a look at Raph right now, you can see that the shuriken do fit into this bandolier going across his chest. This is the hand that I was talking about that was designed for holding the shuriken right here. You can see that it has that hole. It has the hole in the middle, and this, it pops into that thumb. See that, how the thumb just sort of sits in there? And he has a really good grip on the shuriken right there. That is the only hand that is designed to hold it. One problem that I do have is that the bandana is a little loose as far as holding these ones go. Of course, I should probably move this up a little. Twist it a little. There we go. Oops. Ah, see what I mean? The pockets aren't as deep as I would like them to be to hold the shuriken in there. But I do like this hand and how that's holding them. So you just got to be careful with where you're stashing them on the bandana. The hand has a real tight grip on it, not so much the pockets. Now, another weapon that he comes with right here is the Tonfa, and I don't know if this is supposed to be a nod to the Playmates Turtles that had Tonfa on that sprue that he came with, or if this is a nod to the Mirage Comics era, because I believe when they did a flashback issue where the turtles were young, Raf was training with the Tonfa before he had the Psy. Nothing to say that it's not an homage to both. But I think the Tonfa look good, and as a matter of fact, they're probably the most proportionally, well-proportionally sized weapons that he comes with. I really like the wood grain in there, that you can see 
that's sculpted in there. That's actually textured. You can feel that. That's not a paint app on there. And I like that. I like that attention to detail. I think they look good. They look wooden. And that's really all they need to be. Now, he does have his weapon-wielding hands here that he has on right here. But if we put it in his hand... Whoops, bandana came off. If we put it in his hand, you can see it's very loose. It's very spinny. It's not going to hold position. What you have to do, like I did with this one right here, is you kind of have to get it in so that the top piece, which is wider than the rest of the handle, so the top piece... Whoop, is held between his fingers. So you just have to sink it like that. And then he has a better, more secure grip on it. And you can get some posing out of it. You can see a shuriken are falling out too. Like I said, these pockets are way, these pockets are way too shallow for that. Unfortunately, you can't get one like up against the arm in a defensive posture, but at least he can get a grip on them. And if you do take it out and you put it in his hand like this, he can get a solid grip on it as well. So he can hold them. I just wish he had a tighter grip on them whenever you push them flush with his forearm right here. Basically, I wish the handle was a little bit thicker, like with the top piece or even the, the butt of it right there. One thing that I almost forgot to show you is that he does have these loops on the back of his belt, and first inclination would be, oh, those are for the Psy. However, as you can see, the Tonfa fit in there very well as well without stretching the the loop without stretching the plastic so you would still be able to get the sigh in there if you would want to put them in but if you wanted to pose him holding the sigh stars in the bandolier and tonfa in the back loops you can at least pose him holding all of his gear so you know you don't misplace it or lose it or anything i like that little bit of detail that you can fit them back there and then finally, we have his Psy that are, quite frankly, huge. And they're painted in this silver paint, just like the Shuriken are. This isn't molded in silver, I don't feel. I feel that they're molded in some other type of plastic, maybe this brown, and then they're painted over with this silver, which I wish they would have just molded it in the silver, because I have a feeling that eventually this silver paint is going to start flaking off. We also have some brown right here for the wraps which I think this is painted as well, so it's not brown plastic. I don't know what color the plastic is supposed to be, but I have a bad feeling that over the years we will find out. So we have the brown wraps, we have the pommel right here, and then we have the tines of the Psy. One thing that this does, which is a pet peeve, Psy are not edged. They are not bladed weapons. They are round or they are octagonal. This of is very much sculpted with the idea that it's a blade. And I know the Turtles, Raphael always has like bladed Psy. I know it's that way for Karai. I know it's that way sometimes in Daredevil for Elektra. But that is a pet peeve of mine that it shouldn't be that way. Now, the handle of the Psy are much bigger than the handle of the Tonfa, which you can see with Raph having a really good grip on the side, that it's not loose like the Tonfa was. But you don't want to see it held like this. You want to see this hand hold the side, or rather, let's see, this hand hold the side. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, that the way the thumb and the fingers are positioned, you can get that iconic look out of it, but it's a little bit... You have to be a little delicate with it because it's a tight, tight fit. And the first time I tried it, I really worried I was going to snap it. You kind of have to finagle it. Let me do this off camera and I'll show you what the end result is. Okay, there we go. We got it through his fingers. I can't do it while it's on the wrist because I feel like the rest of the figure gets in the way. And it's a little tricky right there because the fingers don't flex as well as I would hope they would. And the Psy are a little stiff that sometimes I feel like if you try and push it or pressure it too much that you run the risk of snapping them, especially these side prongs here. I have a feeling that a lot of collectors who have this figure 
are going to get him into this position, and then he'll pretty much just stay like that at that point. I mean, don't get me wrong. He does look cool once you get it in there, and you can see how how the fingers form around it right here and why it's a little bit of a trick getting the whole thing tucked in there tight and together. Once you get it in there, though, totally worth it. And then just like the Tonfa, the Psy fit very nicely into the loops on the back of his belt. And of course, we have the collector's card that they talked about on the box, and this is some really nice artwork from the box. I like the look of this. I like this. This is definitely Raphael in action. And then on the back here, we have a bit of a bio for the IDW version of Raphael, along with sort of like that digital render of the figure. If you want to, go ahead, pause, and read. And then even though I don't have him back in the box, it's worth noting that this tray that the figure and all the accessories came in, there were no ties in it. Everything just sat in there. And then there is another piece that fits over top of it that sandwiches everything inside, and then you can put it back in the box. So it is worth noting that this comes with collector-friendly packaging that once you take them out, you can box them back up. And now for size comparison, here he is beside Best Action Cowboy Bebop Spike and Vicious. And this is why I can't see the human figures for this line, the human characters for this line, being at the true 5-inch scale, because... Uh, Spike and Vicious are five inches, and you can see they're much smaller, they're shorter than Raphael. I'm thinking the human figures for this line are going to be between five and a half and six inches tall. And here he is beside Hasbro Marvel Legends Hand Ninja and Daredevil Electra. And if you get why this comparison is so important, kudos to you. But I do want to point out that I really like this setup here. I like how he sizes up with some 6-inch figures, with some 1 12th inch scale figures. That was another reason why I didn't get into the NECA and Super 7 figures. Being at 7 inches tall, I actually wanted something that would integrate with, like, a 6-inch line. And the, the, the Loyal Subjects right here fits in very well, that he's shorter than the two human figures, but he's much broader, much stockier, which is how the turtles should be. Here he is beside Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Trooper and Nunchuck, because why not? Here he is beside Valiverse Action Force Bone Collector Version 2 and Pandora. Here he is beside the Medicom Mafex Night Crusader Batman and Mezco 112 Collective Storm Shadow. Here he is beside the Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse New Eternia Battle Armor He-Man and Masters of the Universe movie Skeletor. I don't collect the Origins line, so I don't have any 5.5 figures to size him up to. But considering he's about 5.5 inches to begin with, they'll probably be roughly about the same scale. Here he is beside NECA Toys Dungeons & Dragons War Duke and Grimsword. And finally, here he is with Airborne and Me from the G.I. Joe Steel Core. So I think I may have finally found the turtle line that I'm going to collect. This is the size I've been looking for. This is the scale I've been looking for. They fit in perfectly with my 1 12th scale figures, which is important to me because I have so many ninja figures that it's going to be cool to put them into some ninja fights with them. Also, it's going to fit in well with the DC 112th line I'm building. You saw how he looked next to the Mafex Nightfall Batman. And, you know, the Batman TMNT crossover, that was really cool. It's going to be cool to, like, get them together on the shelf. I am going to get one or two, maybe three more figures before I decide whether or not this is the line I'm going for. I do have some of the Comic-Con exclusives that are in my pile of loot right now, like the Foot Assassin and Janinka, and I'm waiting on the Donatello and Metalhead 2-pack before I have everything sent here, but I'm pretty sure once I get my hands on those, I'll decide if I'm going to like just go in on this line or not. I really am hoping that the human figures are taller, especially when you saw what uh, Spike and Vicious looked like next to Raphael. I don't expect them to be at like a full six inch scale, but I am hoping they're between like five and a half to like five and three quarters tall. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a perfect line. I do have some gripes and some critiques about this. First and foremost is the paint apps. There was a lot of sloppy paint on there that you could see. There was some chipped paint. There was some overspray. The mask has some really soft painting that I feel like 
could have a better paint job on it. You saw the chip on the wrist guards. Um, there was something else I can't... Oh, and the teeth was a really, really, like, weak-looking paint job there. Also, the eyes. I'm not expecting photo real with this line, but I would love if they could, you know, look forward. Also, the sigh. I don't get why you wouldn't just mold those in a silvery plastic and then paint the handles on rather than painting everything. And one other thing is that the sigh holding hands. I appreciate that we got a set of hands that you can put the sigh between his two fingers and hold them in that classic Raphael style hold for the sigh. But man, those hands are so tight. I really do feel like that whenever I put them in or take them out, it feels like I'm on the verge of breaking the sigh. So I have this feeling that once this video is over, I'm going to put the sigh in there and they're pretty much just going to stay in that position whenever I have them up on the shelf. Also, as far as the articulation goes, the elbow and knee joints can get kind of ugly sometimes when you get them in those really exaggerated poses. That is what it is, though. But the one that I think could really be improved on is the ankles and the feet. There's not a whole lot of mobility in the ankles. I get it. You got these big, chunky ankles with the wraps down there. I get you're not going to be able to get a lot of articulation out of it. But I think this figure, the, the turtles here, that is, would benefit greatly from like a toe hinge. For as big as those feet are and as big as those toes are, I feel like you could get a really effective toe hinge on there. Now, the other thing you have to take into consideration is, especially if you're talking about this line versus NECA and Super 7, this figure was $22. So it's not like you're shelling out the same amount of money that you would for NECA or Super 7. And if you want a high-end designer line of figures for the Turtles, I get that. I totally get that go for it. I'm glad you enjoy them. But for me, at this price range, at this scale, this is exactly what I was looking for. Hello, and don't go yet. Before you do, please remember to do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you already are a subscriber, you rock. If you like what we do here and you want to help the channel grow, please consider becoming a YouTube channel member or a Coffee Monthly subscriber, where for $1 a month you can get access to member benefits, like our monthly membership video. This month it is the Mezco 112 Collective Storm Shadow. So until next time, my friends, play well, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.